So let me just jump in my talk. And uh, if I look at my friends and colleagues at the university, uh, other places, there I can see that actually I have two different kinds of smart people there. There's one type of smart people, these are the techies. And the other group from my friends and colleagues, I would call the socies. They're all also very smart, but different, very different kind of smart. And the difference is between those two groups, the first group actually is, as the name says, is very technology savvy. They can produce marvelous charts, can uh, are very creative and, and are very good in producing new kinds of, of um, possibilities to communicate stuff. But as soon as it comes to content, they often lose their interest. They lose their interest when they want to actually, they just are, think it's a new and fancy stuff, you can make new uh, fancy kind of communication, but as soon as you go into the, the content, they lose often their interest. And on the other side, you have the socies. They're very theory savvy. They know a lot about content. Uh, content. They're nuanced and they're articulate. But as soon as it comes to communicate, they're often stuck to the verbal language. They produce things like that. This is a bit extreme, but uh, they also, uh, often produce either oral or written uh, words. And the problem is with this spoken language, with the verbal language, is that it is strictly linear. You only can communicate linear stuff, and the socies, actually the content of the soci, the social world, is very often not linear, but multidimensional. And so they have a prob problem to communicate, actually, their content. And so what is the idea of this talk of mine, is to somehow have this ditch, this gap, this river, between those two groups of intelligent people, and I want to somehow cl close this group. And one thing is, when, when I first was uh, asked to talk here, uh, then I, saw I, didn't, I have to admit, I didn't knew this TED stuff. And I thought, what, what kind of strange thing is that? that? And then, when I was, was on the list there, on the web page, uh, it was uh, very, very fast. A lot of people came up to me and said, oh, you're talking at TED. So I knew that isn't so fancy, that must be something very popular. But very interestingly, all those people came from the techie side of the bench. So perhaps it's a bit, I'm more perhaps on the social side and you are more on the techie side. So hand up who is on the techie bench of the river. Who is on the soci bench of, oh, quite a lot. Who is on the third, third dimension? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> So, okay, I didn't want to insult them, the, the designers and all those. They're also very smart. But, you know, as long as nobody calls you or you're smart as a plankton, perhaps you, you didn't get that, <laughs> then it's okay. So, the idea is to, sorry, to bridge this gap between those two sides. And when we all started uh, with our analysis, actually, my interest was in the referendums, referendum politics of Switzerland. Because it's, it's very a very special thing that we have. That we have per, per, uh, in average, we have nine referendums a year. That gives 90 referendums a decade. And you have the yes percentage of every municipality of Switzerland. This is a lot of very interesting data, because these referendums, they reach from, from uh, same-sex same -sex marriage or civil union, to the abolition of the army, to fiscal policy. So we have a, a lot of knowledge about how people think, and I'm a geographer, so I'm very interested in how people think in the different areas of Switzerland. And if you just put this data all together and make a factor analysis, strictly inductive, then you actually see that behind all these uh, 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 tens and, and hundreds of uh, referendums, there is almost every, uh, almost is only three dimensions. And two of them are the most important, 
and I can show you. And these two dimensions, it's not, uh, it's not the, the, uh, we just saw they, these dimensions and we could name them because we knew what kind of referendums were on this dimension. We saw that on the, this is what we call left-right, there were all these fiscal and social big, uh, big government versus uh, small government uh, kind of stuff. And on the vertical dimension, on the second dimension, there were all the, the more cultural stuff, opening of Switzerland, uh, anti-migration on the other side, liberal versus uh, conser uh, conservative. This was the, uh, the two, these are the two dimensions. Now we want to communicate this. The first thing what we do is actually we make a scatter plot. That's the most easiest thing to do. And what you see, you don't see a lot if you just make a scatter plot. These are the, all the municipalities of Switzerland. You don't see much, but you see much more if you do it like that. You see, first we have, the bigger these communities are, the bigger the dots are. And now you see that all the big cities are on the upper left side. They are left liberal. And you also see that the different language part of Switzerland, they have different uh, mentalities, typical mentalities. The French part is more liberal and more left, and the German part is more uh, to the uh, German-speaking part is uh, more to the conservative side. So that was the second step. We took a third step and we produced a map. It's the same thing as you saw before, but it's a map. And what's the advantage of the map? It looks nice, that's the first advantage. And the second advantage is that uh, in a map you can com combine very general information. You have the general inf information you had before with very detailed information. For example, you see that Unter Iberg, a community in the canton of Schwyz, is the most conservative uh, municipality of Switzerland. You see that Zurich and Bern and Basel are very close on this map, but Zollikon, which is the neighbor, neighbor community of Zurich, is very far away on the liberal li uh, right side, the typical liberal uh, affluent uh, part of, of, uh, of the greater Zurich area. So that was our map. With a map, and with this kind of map, you can uh, compare a lot of objects in two dimensions. But it's hard to visualize more than two dimensions. You can do it with three, but it's not, not so easy. But you can't, can't do more than three. So we wanted to have a more detailed profile of objects, and we created the Smart Spider. We invented the Smart Spider, and the Smart Spider actually has eight dimensions. And with these eight dimensions, you can, very have a, can make a very kind of, kind of detailed profile, political profile of people. For example, on the, on the vertical, on the top, you have internationalism, you can read it, economic liberalism, fiscal conservatism, law and order, anti-migration, and, 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 and when, I can't say that, social welfare on the other side. So, we can compare, for example, parties with, with each other. You see on the, on the right side, you see the Christian Democrat, the CVP. On the left side, you see the Liberals, the FDP. And you see they have different attitudes. And you can even compare then the, the presidents of these two parties with their party, and you see they're not completely aligned. You see that they're, all, they're both a bit more on the left side, on the, uh, uh, mainly on the liberal, a bit on the liberal side of their party. So you can compare uh, people and parties with each other. And actually, we did that because we were asked by people who created the website SmartVote. Uh, Smart yes. And this SmartVote website actually uh, was the idea that you can compare yourself, your, your position with the position of polit politicians, that you can decide who you want to elect and who you want, don't want to elect. I think you know SmartVote. And uh, up to now, uh, the smart spider is still used in uh, smart world. It also was used uh, in the uh, Euro spider, uh, Euro profile, uh, Euro profiler. This is you see it here. The Euro profiler is a, a tool that is used for the European election in every European uh, country, in every EU country in, in this spring. So it. Uh, came, it also went abroad and not uh, was kept in Switzerland. And the other dimension was met 
uh, was meant uh, by Peter is that you see the smart spider everywhere in the newspaper uh, as soon as somebody wants to, uh, a newspaper wants to somehow describe the position of, of uh, candidates of an election, they have the pro profiles, the portraits, and they also uh, have an image of a spider. You have this in the Tagesanzeiger, the Bund, I just uh, show you some examples, Tribune de Schneef, and you also have it even in the NZZ. So, and actually what pleases me most is, is that the spider even became uh, object and target of cartoonists. You see here two examples where the spider was, was depicted from cartoonists in two different uh, newspapers. And then another funny thing is that you can even find people who use their own spider in, as, as a Facebook profile image. So that is an example of that. Now, I just t uh, told you that you can compare different persons with each other, parties with each other, and uh, I think a very interesting application of this spider is to compare the position of the political elites with the basis, with the people. And we can do that because with, before of e every referendum there is a rotation in the parliament, and then you can look how it is the par parliament uh, positioned on the same issue as we afterwards have the referendum. And then you can, for every of those dimensions, you can uh, compare or, may or, or, or count the gap between the elites and the bases, between the elites and the people. And you see here which kind of dimensions, they, on which kind of dimension there is a big gap, and on which kind of dimension there is a small gap. And you see it, it's very much on the vertical side of this spider, where you have a big gap, and it's on the horizontal uh, dimension where you have a small gap. So you see that fiscal conservatism and social welfare, the question of big or small government, actually their parliament and people are very much in, li in line. But in these questions of migration, internationalism and economic liberalization, there is a big gap between the elites and the people. And you always see it in, in, in this parliament, uh, in these referendums, where this, can, this happens when, when we have surprisingly only the popular party is pro, and then even it gets more than 50% uh, from the people. So, this spider was quite a success story, and actually we were confronted from my friends, from my colleagues, with two kinds of questions. And the one group, or the one question came from the techies. They said, What's the fuss? It's just a radiograph. <laughs> you know, radiographs, they're existing since, since tens of years. It's nothing new, it's nothing special, actually. And the socialists, they said, why, don't, uh, why don't, doesn't it work with my uh, data, with my, uh, with my dimensions? Well, they wanted to, they thought it's very interesting, it's cool stuff, I wanted to use it too, and then they wanted to create some dimension, and it didn't work, it didn't work out. And uh, actually, I have for both, of two, uh, for both groups, I have one answer, and it's following an old saying from the 90s. This saying says, it's the dimension stupid. It's actually not a spider as a radiograph, it's nothing special. The special thing of it is that we have well chosen the dimension. You can see it here. Actually, uh, you, you have seen these dimensions before. These were the dimen dimensions of the political landscape, and actually, these dimensions, these two dimensions, are behind the eight dimensions in the spider. You can look at those three pictures, and you see actually the dimensions that are, are somehow correlating with the liberal conservative are on the vertical side, vertical, and the dimensions who are more on the left-right, they are on the horizontal. So you have actually a very typical image of every party. You have the typical image of the Swiss Popular Party on the downside on the right. You have the typical image from the Liberals on the upside of the right. And you have the typical image of the Social Democrats on the left side. That's why it's so, so easy to recognize and easy to read this spider, because it has a structure. And that's actually where content and where visualization techniques come together. 
So I want to show you more actual and more newer uh, application of this thinking in dimension, in this using a multi the multi-dimensional models uh, with social phenomena. There are a lot of social phenomena who are multi-dimensional. Also, immigration. We actually have two types of immigration. And they are very different. We have the traditional immigration. We knew it for, for a long time. It's coming mainly from, uh, from the south. It's mainly from people with low, low education uh, level, low skilled workforce. That actually was for, for tens of years, this was the typical migrant was from the south. And now since 10 years, 15 years, we have a new type of migration from the north with high skilled worker, and they are very different in their position and structure. And these are two dimensions, and we wanted to depict it in two dimensions. What you he see here is the percentage of the new type of migration in the horizontal, uh, the old type in the horizontal, and the new type in the vertical dimension. You see, for example, Dietikon is a typical working class uh, city, small city in the Limatal. It actually has a traditionally a very high percentage, high share of old type migration. Kreuzlingen also, uh, for example, Zug and Baden, they have much less of them, then have a bit more of the new type of a migration. So I want to share with you, for the almost end of my talk, uh, uh, Hans Rosling moment and show how this changed over time. So I think you looked very much on Kreuzlingen because it changed very much, but actually Kreuzlingen is a borough of Konstanz, it's on just on the border of Germany and there it's normal that a lot of Germans came and it increased this uh, share of foreigners from Germany very much. But you also see that in every, in almost all of these communities, these uh, dynamics from the uh, lower right to the upper left, you can see it, and you can see it that actually the percentage of foreigners doesn't change. And if you would look at it one-dimensionally, nothing would change, but the structure and the, the combination of the people is very much changing. This is actually something you only can see in this two-dimensional diagram. So let me end with a quote from people uh, from Alan Kay, a computer scientist. People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. I only know this quote because it was uh, requoted by, by Steve Jobs in, when he presented the iPhone 207. And it's a very good quote, and it's very, it's very fitting to the iPhone. But I also think you can somehow reformulate it, and you can make it fit to what we, or what I do. People who are really serious about content should make their own visualizations, and vice versa. So, actually, you just can't only bridge this stick. You have to walk the walk, and you have to, for yourself, go from one side to the other that you can reach this uh, aim. Thank you very much.